sometimes the list is too big to fit in just 10 spots. And when it comes to horror vehicles, many people have their own preferences that left an impact on them or terrified them ever since they saw them on screen. Here once again are even more cars and other forms of transport that deserve a second shot on this list. MFP presents 10 horror vehicles on screen, part 2. The third part of the anthology 1983 horror film, Nightmares, titled The Benediction, featured a possessed pickup truck that borrowed a number of cues from the likes of other Man vs. Machine films. In this case, it is a black 1979 Chevrolet C20 Fleetside with smoke windows and an additional bull bar and spotlights added, pursuing a pastor that has lost his faith at a New Mexico mission, played by pre-aliens and Terminator fame Lance Henriksen. Suffering from a crisis in faith, after being tortured from a number of nightmares and witnessing the loss of a young boy from a robbery shooting, Henriksen's character decides to cross the desert and leave his church in a 1970 with a 7172 front-end Chevrolet Chevelle Malibu. It is there does he come across the black pickup that seems to randomly and magically appear on the road, roaring its V8 engine and attacking the fleeing priest. One aspect of this chase that sets it apart from the other previously mentioned influences is the moment when after being attacked several times, the priest stops due to hearing, yet not seeing the Chevy approaching him. It is here to we the audience and Father Frank discover that this is no ordinary truck, where in an almost tremors type fashion, does the pickup travel under the earth and emerge by jumping out of the ground, proving to the father that this is indeed a supernatural entity chasing him down. When self-proclaimed Mistress of the Dark and cable hostess Elvira made the leap from TV to Hollywood in 1988 in a self-titled film, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, it was decided to give her her own ride in the form of a black 1959 Ford Thunderbird convertible, given the title of the Macabre Mobile. Originally starting out in red and as a hardtop, the car would later have its colour changed to black and the top cut down into a convertible and given a leopard interior and chain steering wheel, along with a custom spider's web grille to match the tone of its driver, who had made a name for herself through her gothic sexy appearance and tongue-in-cheek humour. A persona created by showgirl turned actress Cassandra Peterson for her then TV show Elvira's Movie Macabre that originally ran from 1981 to 1993, Peterson quickly became a recognised face within LA and later nationwide thanks to involvement with Cause Beer and their Halloween campaign. Come the closing years of the 1980s, Elvira was to get her own feature length film and it was Peterson herself who chose the Thunderbird when she saw it on the streets and was convinced that this was to be Elvira's mode of transport. The car itself did not do much in the film nor have any supernatural elements to it and despite coming with a stock 352 Ford V8 with 300 horsepower, though according to Peterson herself, the chosen Thunderbird could barely run under its own power and was either trailered around or pulled along by towing wires. The car would be auctioned off after filming ended and eventually returned to Peterson who bought it back in poor condition years later and first sent it to Hollywood car customizing legend George Barris to restore it. The Macabre Mobile then made its way on Accounting Cars on the History Channel and was given a full restoration by Danny Coker and his team and now rests as part of Coker's car collection in Las Vegas. <laughs> it should be no surprise by this point that another midnight black classic American car is portrayed as the evil mode of transport in this 2015 adaptation of the popular children's horror fiction novels, Goosebumps. Though different to its original book illustration and depiction, personified in this instance for its live action adaptation starring Jack Black in this crossing of reality and fiction, retelling of the classic stories of the series, the vehicle of mention is a 1969 Lincoln Continental Mark III which is a direct homage to the 1971 Lincoln Continental from the 1977 horror classic, The Car. Equipped with a stock standard 460 365 horsepower V8 engine and given some extra lighting for its grill to give it more of a demonic presence as it lurks about in the dark of a small town being terrorised by the creatures of writer R.L. Stein, played by Black in the film, the haunted car unfortunately is criminally underused, shown mostly as a mode of transport for the main antagonist of the story, Slappy the Dummy, who uses the car to travel around town and unleash the monsters of R.L. Stein out into the real world. Originating the 21st book in the Goosebumps series, the story was first published in 1999, making it just short of showing for the original 1995 to 1998 popular TV series. Being hound the story within the book that the car was possessed by the daughter of the original owner of the vehicle, that was described as a 1986 sports Corvette, this detail gives it a slight Christine connection, making this an interesting PG combination of Stephen King's Plymouth Fury and the other Lincoln Mark III, and gave us this short but sweet horror film ride in the film, fit for a demonic dummy to be chauffeured about in. Who are you calling dummy? Dummy! What you got in the trunk? Oh... 
You don't want to look in there. With Repo Man being the first feature-length film he would write and direct, British director Alex Cox would later gain fame for his Gary Oldman starring biopic Sid and Nancy, yet it was this 1984 oddball of a film that gained him early attention. The story centered on a young punker named Otto, played by Emilio Estevez, struggling to make ends meet until he comes across Repo Man Bud, played by veteran actor Harry Dean Stanton, who introduces him to the business. The story kicks in when a $20,000 contract arrives that requires the repossession of a 1964 Chevrolet Chevelle Malibu, a car showed early on in the film to carry a mystery, as we see several people disintegrate after opening and viewing the contents within its boot, a concept borrowed heavily from the 1955 sci-fi thriller, Kiss Me Deadly. The car becomes somewhat of a bomb on wheels, as it is said that the actual contents of the vehicle are the bodies of two dead aliens, which begin to emit more and more radiation as they decompose, to the point of which the car begins to glow and becomes deadly to the touch of anyone it does not want to get into contact with it. In order to achieve this later glowing effect with a low budget only available, some off-the-shelf glow-in-the-dark paint was obtained and used to cover the Malibu. Being the first feature film of Cox, Universal agreed to do the picture on a tiny budget, and as such, for all its featuring in the film, only one Malibu was obtained, which led to the serious problem of completing the story when the one and only car had been stolen during production, but was luckily found soon after. A failure at the box office, Repo Man gained its fame through critical praise and through its mixed punk rock soundtrack that was selling well on its own and would later make it a cult classic. The film remains etched into many people's memories for its political take on the breakdown of society and for its quotable dialogue and the car becoming a mysterious MacGuffin onto itself. This boy feels the need for speed. With the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise showcasing a number of different forms of horror transports, it is the fifth installment, The Dream Child, that takes this spot on the list. Being no stranger to bringing dream vehicles into the nightmares of his victims, as was the case with the 1958 Cadillac Series 62 convertible, bearing his red and green motif at the end of the original Nightmare on Elm Street film, Freddy Krueger enjoys torturing the teens from Elm Street and would at times take them on some wild rides. This was no more evident than when the previous film survivor Dan was forced into another loop of dreams by Freddy, as the character struggled to reach his girlfriend Alice when the warning of Freddy's return had reached him. First trapping Dan, played by Danny Hassel in his pickup as he falls asleep behind the wheel, it is after he makes his escape and happens to come across a key ready 1988-89 Yamaha VMAX 1200 motorcycle does the nightmare really kick in. What follows is a scene where the VMAX is seen flying down a highway as it slowly morphs Dan into what can be described as a living machine as it strips away parts of his body and fusing him into the vehicle. The scene faced heavy censorship from the MPAA when released due to the detailed nature of showing Dan being torn apart by the motorbike in a slow, be it wonderful practical effects manner that is shown to be another manifestation of Freddy Krueger in a mechanical form, taunting Dan as he takes his usual pleasure in this form of torture. Director Stephen Hopkins and his effects crew use a number of reverse photography to make the scene come to life, in seeing all the metal tubing and wiring enter actor Hassel and stunt writer John Hatley's body. Dan's death has become a favourite among Nose fans, and usually ranks within most top 10 lists of Freddy kills thanks to its inventiveness. <laughs> Being no stranger to demonic vehicles, as he's been referenced before several times on similar lists, writing legend Stephen King once again brought back this presence in the 1991 made-for-TV adaptation of his short story, Sometimes They Come Back, with a classic 1950s American Cruiser V8 that saw said car return from the depths of hell with its driver and passengers to seek revenge. As per usual with the small town settings, King brings his 1950s and 60s style bullies to wreak terror onto a group of unsuspecting victims this time driving in a black with flame decal 1955 Chevy 150. The car itself is one that seems to often find its way into a number of other films. It was one of the original hot rods of the golden era of those cars in the 1950s and 60s, mostly thanks due to its small yet powerful V8 turbo fire engine with around 180 horsepower that made it a must have for many muscle car enthusiasts of the time due to its simplicity and output. Sometimes they come back follows an incident set in 1963, where on their way home through a train tunnel, two brothers are cornered by a gang of bullies in their Chevy and after killing one brother during a confrontation, the situation takes place where the remaining sibling steals the keys to the 150, leaving the bullies unable to avoid their fate in time. The story then leads into the present, where the young brother of Jim, played by Tim Matheson, returns back to his hometown to teach at a local school, only to find his students are disappearing one by one, and their killers return to terrorize Jim and his family once more, along with the very car which led to their own demise. The Chevy becomes one of the main stars of the story, as it is used to great effect to terrorize the school students and Jim, and is the focus on a number of promotional material for the film, and is one of the more memorable aspects of this made-for-TV adaptation of Stephen King's short story. No! 
a made-for-TV horror film that took a number of inspirations from the likes of Steven Spielberg's Duel, Wheels of Terror did not make the same lasting impression on moviegoers. Yet for those who saw it when it was first released in 1990, it is a mostly forgotten film that has its own following of sorts among its fans. Touching on a more sensitive subject than that of just terrorizing and killing unsuspecting victims on the road, the target of the lead vehicle in Wheels of Terror, that of being a used 1971-1974 dirtied up black Dodge Charger, is that of the youth of a small desert Arizona town who are kidnapped by an unseen driver as they cruise around searching for their prey on the sides of the roads. Only available from old VHS copies, as no master transfer has taken place as of to date, Wheels of Terror sees the film bring in leading lady Joanne Cassidy of Blade Runner fame, playing a newly arrived to town mother and local school bus driver take on this menace on the road, which like most of its previous inspirations, appears and vanishes at random, as the vehicle is portrayed to have an almost supernatural presence about it. Being modified with its front and altered to give it a more menacing scale to its appearance, the 1974 Dodge Charger did indeed play the part of the horror car quite well, and although being one of Young Gun's director Christopher Kane's lesser known directed films, the climax of the story sees Cassidy's bus driver character go head to head with the car in a demolition duel in a somewhat all too familiar ending. Although it was panned by critics of the time, Wheels of Terror is still remembered by those who caught a glimpse of it when it was first released, and have since gone on to praise the film for what it tried to achieve, and have some spooky memories seeing this car chase down and take its unsuspecting victims as it lurked about waiting in the background. Though more of a hero's battering ram and less of a horror vehicle in Army of Darkness, over a period of four decades, it is impossible to think of Sam Raimi's Evil Dead franchise and mention its protagonist of Ash Williams without thinking about his 1973 Honey Beige Oldsmobile Delta 88 town sedan. Owned by Raimi himself, the car was included in the series originally due to the low slash non-existent budget of the first film that had become the passion project among the director and his friends, which include the film's lead and Sam's longtime buddy, Bruce Campbell. Being mostly seen as just another form of transport in the first two films, the 73 Delta 88 became just as part of the franchise identity as much as the star and style of the films themselves. It would not be until the third installment of the series, Army of Darkness, after being sent back through time along with our hero, after a failed incantation to vanquish the fabled Deadites, did the Oldsmobile with its rocket 455 V8 engine become an established character and would later be repaired and transformed into the Demon Slayer known as the Death Coaster. Given a steam-based engine and spinning blades on its hood to chop at anything that got in its way, the Delta did indeed become one of the ultimate badass demon killers of the film. Said to have even returned back into the present with our century hopping protagonist, though this is shown in an alternate ending of the film, this would make the car become another stylish form of a time traveling vehicle. In fact the car proved such a character that it made its way into the short lived Ash vs Evil Dead TV series, where it would eventually become possessed by the forces of evil, only to be stopped with Ash ramming a chainsaw into its engine slash heart. Loosely adapted from a 1944 novella of the same name by Theodore Sturgeon, Killdoze even made its way to a Marvel comic adaptation that same year of its release, in an issue of Worlds Unknown number 6. Using a Caterpillar D9 to portray the evil killer bulldozer, this 70s TV movie was one of the earliest blueprints for the possessed vehicle subgenre that would follow soon after. Set on an island 200 miles off the coast of Africa, the film follows the idea of a mysterious meteorite crash landing on Earth, only to be uncovered by an excavation crew, which leads to some alien entity possessing one of their dozers. With the limited cast, the story becomes one of survival, as the contracted crew are being hunted down and killed off one by one, as all attempts to stop the machine constantly fail. Limited by its budget, and less than A-list cast, the film is one of those rare instances where despite lacking in wider theatrical and international distribution, it did gain a cult following, and has had several elements borrowed from over the years, and has been referenced in other pop culture outings, such as Mystery Science Theater 3000 and Planet Terror. Lacking in the speed and pace of a lot of other horror vehicle movies of that era, as the top speed of the D9 was that of about 7.5 miles per hour, and given the limited cast and secluded location, the film succeeds in building and maintaining tension throughout its short hour and 13 minute runtime, and is an interesting look at an idea of vehicle possession early in its conception. Over here! The bane of one YouTuber's existence for not including it in the first top 10 list, and has been asked about for over and over again to the point of bloody madness, the 2001 film Jeepers Creepers is a horror film that seems to have gathered a rather large following over the decade since its release. One of the reasons has been due to the inclusion of what many have claimed to be one of the scariest vehicles on screen in the form of a modified 1941 Chevrolet heavy duty COE truck, which was our first introduction to the killer of this film, 
As old and decrepit as the truck appears on the outside, somewhat mimicking the killer that drives it, the Chevy is shown to be more powerful than it appears, as it would seem not to be carrying its original 216 cubic inch blue flame 6 with around 80 horsepower output, due to being more than a match in chasing down a 1960 Chevrolet Impala driven by the two leads of the film. Though denied by its filmmaker and having any connection, the opening scene and idea of a man and woman coming across a mysterious vehicle while driving along a country road, being witness to some suspicious activity taking place, seeing the dumping of what appeared to be a body wrapped in a bloody sheet in a remote location, was discussed and played out in a very similar manner in an early 90s episode of the TV series Unsolved Mysteries. Initially three trucks were custom built for the film, one of which was an empty shell for specifically needed static scenes, while the other two were used for driving sequences. With its attention grabbing custom license plate and spooky as hell horn, the truck was the first presence we got of the film's main antagonist, as it perfectly captured the character and would later be shown to be somewhat demonic creature that feasts on unsuspecting motorists along country roads. Yet as a number of fans have pointed out, it is the truck that is the real star of this early 2000s horror flick. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button in order to help this channel grow and to bring you more content like this one as your support is what keeps this channel going.